This is the M3 Ultra Powered Mac Studio, and this is the M4 Pro Mac Mini, and these machines have a lot more in common than you might think. While the Mac Studio does have more features and power, with most use cases, the Mac Mini feels just as good, and it's only in certain instances that you see the Studio pull ahead. For the past few weeks, I've been trying to figure out what those instances are, where the differences lie between these two, and determine when someone should actually get the studio over the mini, or vice versa, and today we're getting into all of that. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Apple recently refreshed their entire desktop Mac lineup, and now more than ever, it can be tough to decide which model to choose, especially if you're using it for more demanding workflows. Between the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio, you've got four different chips with all different configurations, and these are so powerful now that for most things, you really don't need to spec these out much. A couple of weeks ago when I was reviewing the MacBook Air with the regular M4 chip, I was able to run my entire workflow without any issues, so even with the base level machines, you really can't go wrong these days, but let's say that you do need to get more from a machine. Maybe you're doing software development and you're looking for faster compile times, you could be video editing or doing 3D modeling and want faster render times, or maybe you just want better connectivity or to future-proof yourself. That's when you'll probably reach for a more pro-level machine. Both the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio that I have here are a big step up in performance over the M4, but also in price. This Mac Mini costs $21.99 USD or $31.99 Canadian. That has an M4 Pro chip with a 14-core CPU, 20-core GPU with 48 gigs of memory and a 1TB SSD. Where the Mac Studio is almost double the cost at 4000 USD or 5500 Canadian, which comes with an M3 Ultra chip that has a 28 core CPU, 60 core GPU, 96 gigs of memory, and a 1 terabyte SSD. Looking at the price and the specs, the Mac Studio is essentially doubling up on almost everything here, but I wouldn't necessarily say that you're getting twice the machine. A lot of that is wrapped up in performance and different use cases, which can get somewhat complex. So before I dive into all of that, I want to talk about some of the more obvious differences, the first being the design. In terms of size, the Mac Mini is obviously much smaller at 2 inches tall, taking up a 5x5 five five inch surface area, and the Mac Studio is 3.7 inches tall, and takes up a 7.7x7.7 7 7 7 inch surface area, so the Mini is a lot more versatile in terms of where and how you want to place it, and it's actually quite portable if you want to use it in multiple places as well. That being said, in the grand scheme of things, the Mac Studio is still relatively small for a desktop, and being a little bit bigger does have its benefits, like having a wider port selection. On this particular mini, along the back, there's a 1GB Ethernet port, HDMI, and 3 Thunderbolt 5 ports. On the front, you've got two USB-C ports with 10 gigabit speeds and a headphone jack, where the studio has four Thunderbolt 5 ports along the back, a 10 gig Ethernet and HDMI port, two USB-A ports and a headphone jack, while the front has two Thunderbolt 5 ports and an SD card reader. So while the Mini is a touch easier to place, the studio is more versatile in terms of connectivity, and the actual specs on the ports of each of these machines do change depending on the configuration that you select. For starters, on the Mini I can upgrade the Ethernet to 10 gigs for 100 bucks USD, but if I buy a Mac Mini with a regular M4 chip, the Thunderbolt ports will drop from Thunderbolt 5 to Thunderbolt 4, and if I go from the M3 Ultra to the M4 Max chip on the Studio, I will lose Thunderbolt 5 on the front ports, and they'll drop to the same 10 gigabit speeds as the front ports on the Mini. Thunderbolt 5 is twice as fast as version 4 in terms of data transfer bandwidth. Both are still crazy fast, but Thunderbolt 5 does have much wider support for high-performance monitors. 
On this particular Mac Studio, I could potentially connect up to 8 displays with 6K resolution, where the M4 Pro Mini tops out at 3, but more importantly in my opinion is if you have Thunderbolt 5 accessories like external SSDs, you will see a considerable increase in speed, so having that spec on the front USB-C ports can be a lot more convenient for connecting to those types of accessories. Also, if you're a photographer or a videographer, the SD card reader on the front of the studio can come in handy, but I will say I much prefer the placement of the headphone jack on the Mini versus the Studio as it's much more accessible. And you can expand either of these machines with a decent hub or a dock, but for most people you get everything you need with the Studio. Outside of the expanded port selection, the bigger size on the studio also has one big advantage in terms of cooling, where essentially the whole top half of it is a dual fan and cooling assembly, and the Mini has a much smaller assembly in the bottom of the unit. Both will do a great job of keeping things cool, and nothing gets overly hot on either, but the Mini is much louder and generally seems to have to work a lot harder, likely due to that smaller cooling system and the reduced chip performance. For instance, when I fire up a game on the Mac Mini, I almost always hear the fans howling at me, and it does produce a high-pitched noise, which can get annoying. The studio, on the other hand, makes almost no noise at all, so if that is something that's really gonna bother you, it might be worth looking at the base M4 Max Mac Studio that will cost the same amount as this particular Mini if you match the storage. And for most people, I would say that's probably a better option over the M3 Ultra. The reason I say that is, as far as performance goes, unless you know exactly how you're gonna benefit from an Ultra, it's very likely that you're not going to notice any difference, and I would say that the main thing that you'll get from bumping up any chipset in Apple's current lineup is going to do with saving time. For regular usage like web browsing, productivity, and the like, these have the exact same wireless and network specs along with the rest of Apple's lineup, so you really don't notice anything there, even compared to the base M4 chip. And the same goes for a lot of other tasks like basic photo editing, graphic design, and even video editing in some aspects. The time savings are going to be pretty specific to resource heavy stuff. For me personally, the entire reason I got the Ultra is because it has four video encoding engines, where the M4 Pro in my Mac Mini only has one. Between that and the higher performing chip, that means that I can render out footage four to five times faster than the M4 or the M4 Pro. And if this was six months ago, it really wouldn't have made any difference to me as a solo creator, but now that I'm working remotely with other people more often, I can easily end up spending three to four hours a week just rendering video. So cutting that down to a quarter of that has a huge effect on my productivity. Outside of that, the general performance increase does make everything a bit more snappy, and if you take a look at synthetic benchmarks as a reference, you'll see that while single core performance is actually about 15% better on the M4 Pro due to it being a newer architecture, multi-core performance is about 30% better in the M3 Ultra, and the GPU performance is a whopping 46% better. Again, on paper that looks great, but you'll really only notice that in certain areas. Code compile time you can expect to be about 23% faster on the M3 Ultra over the M4 Pro and are only marginally better than the M4 Max. And in different apps, you'll see the M4 Max and M3 Ultra trade blows in CPU performance. So if you're doing things that are mostly sticking to CPU tasks, the M4 Pro or M4 Max is probably a better choice in a lot of cases. With GPU focused work however, there is a much bigger difference where apps like Blender are not only a lot more snappy to load and navigate around, but render times are almost twice as fast on the M3 Ultra over the M4 Pro, and the great thing about the base Mac Studio having 96 gigs of RAM is you can allocate a ton of that to Blender if you want, so it's just a lot more flexible in that sense. Similarly, GPU intensive video plugins work faster and better and frankly video editing in general is smoother on the Mac Studio. You will get those faster render times like I mentioned and because this does have a more powerful 32 core neural engine over the M4 Pro's 16 core engine, plugins and apps that utilize that are a bit faster as well. I'll get into that neural engine in a minute, but just coming back to the GPU, 
if you're someone who games on your Mac, there's a significant difference between these two where the Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra often runs between 15 and 20 frames per second higher than the M4 Pro. It's noticeably smoother, and as I said earlier, you don't get the constant fan noise on the Studio like you do on the Mini. That improvement in performance is not only because the Studio has a significantly more powerful GPU, but this is one of the few instances that memory bandwidth comes into play. The M4 Pro in the Mini has a 273GB per second memory bandwidth, where the M3 Ultra goes up to 819GB per second, which in most cases you're not going to notice, but it can make a big difference with things like real-time ray tracing and complex scene detection in games. I've played my fair share of titles on both of these like Rust, The Long Dark, No Man's Sky, Baldur's Gate 3, and Civilization 7, and even though the M4 Pro Mini runs them fine, it really is night and day between the two. That being said, for any serious gaming, you're probably gonna wanna stick to a PC with a nice dedicated GPU because it's still a better experience gaming-wise over both of these. But that memory bandwidth on the M3 Ultra also makes a big difference when it comes to memory-intensive workloads. Think stuff like running scientific simulations or AI models. With AI specifically, with the Mac Studio having a base memory of 96 gigabytes and that 32 core neural engine, you can run some fairly large AI models locally quite well, where even the most powerful dedicated GPUs struggle due to not being able to load the entire model into memory. I can run 70B AI models locally that require about 70 to 80 gigabytes of memory, where normally you'd need around three RTX 4090s to accomplish the same performance. You're also able to do that at a fraction of the cost, both price-wise and with energy consumption, and you can take the Mac Studio all the way up to 512 gigs of memory that'll run some pretty powerful LLMs locally, which is kind of wild. The Mac Mini, on the other hand, will run lesser models locally, but it is at a severe disadvantage, with one-third the memory bandwidth, and it does top out at a maximum of 64 gigs of RAM, which Honestly, I'm not sure it's really worth getting a Mac Mini with 48 gigs of RAM and above anymore. The reason I say that is, price-wise, I'm just not sure it makes a ton of sense. The base Mac Studio with an M4 Max will essentially cost you the same amount as the M4 Pro Mini I have. And while it does have a bit less RAM, you get a greater port selection, it's a quieter machine, and it does have a bit better performance as well. There will be exceptions to that, say if you want to prioritize the smaller form factor, but I think the sweet spot for most people in the Mini will probably be with a base M4 chip, where you can put together a solid machine for around a thousand bucks USD that in most cases is going to work just as good as these other machines. If you do want to make the jump to the M4 Pro, or you want some of the other features that come with it, like Thunderbolt 5, I found the base M4 Pro chip, which is what's in my MacBook Pro, performs relatively the same as this 14-core version in my Mini. So you can save yourself some money there, but I think beyond that, the only time that it makes sense to push yourself further is if you have specific use cases related to AI, video or 3D rendering, and more demanding workloads, or if you think that you may have them in the future. For me, it made sense because of the time savings I get from rendering video, but if it were just me working as a solo creator or an app developer, I could honestly get by on a pretty simple Mac Mini setup with an M4. That being said, I would love to know what you guys think. If you've got an M-Series Mac, what are you using it for, and do you find there to be any bottlenecks in your own workflow where it would maybe make sense to upgrade? Let me know in the comments down below because I think general discussion around this stuff can really help inform and educate other people on what their needs are, because this Mac lineup can get pretty confusing. That's all I got for you today. I hope you found this video useful or enjoyable. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech-related content or help me build an app that translates your cat's meows into Morse code through a smart speaker, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.